here we are talking about the cellular respiration chapter six notes this will be in a couple of parts so we're covering this topic in two class periods here's the beginning the pictures in the left column come from your chapter six in the textbook so if you would like more information more explanation in text you'll find it in chapter six so when it says figure 6.1 that's chapter six section one and then this picture here, chapter six, section three. And I tried to summarize uh, about a dozen pages into three or four pages here for your notes and you'll answer the questions. But notice on the screen that I've also put in a few other things. So during class, you were encouraged to write on the pictures too and explain the pictures if you were not clear on it. So feel free to take extra notes, not just in the answers to the questions. So let's take a look at this. The chloroplast are in plant cells and this is where photosynthesis takes place. With the energy from the sun, the chloroplast is going to make its own food. And the, the food that it makes, it's called organic and that's a carbohydrate and carbohydrates are sugar and the sugar that it makes is glucose you're going to see later in the notes that glucose has six carbons in it so i have just drawn out six carbons and putting that line between them means that they're covalently bonded together and they're sharing electrons so i wrote six carbons where do these carbons come from that is assembling with the help of the sun? Let's trace this backwards. Plants take in a gas of carbon dioxide. You just now see the source of carbon. It takes the carbon out of the gas that it brings into its leaves and it puts it into a solid form. This process is called carbon fixation when it goes from a gas to a solid. So to continue the circle here, what plants make in glucose is what animals eat. So herbivores eat plants, primary consumers eat the um, herbivores, um, and I should say the primary consumers eat the primary. And so the cycle is going to continue with glucose getting into animal cells. And the glucose isn't needed in your stomach, it's not needed in your intestines, it's needed in every cell. It goes into the mitochondria of the cell. And this is the powerhouse of the cell as we've learned. So remember when you were flying your spaceship around inside the cell and you encountered the mitochondria? When your ship was low in energy, you would drive into the ATP. It turns out that ATP is what we call the currency of the cell. It's the energy molecule. We are going to get the energy out of glucose and put it into a form that the cell can use no matter what it needs to accomplish. So earlier we saw that active transport needs energy to actively pump molecules against the concentration gradient, and that is ATP. So after ATP is made from glucose, the mitochondria is gonna throw away what it doesn't need and it throws away carbon dioxide. It also makes water in the process. So plants make the food and then animals are gonna use it. The gases that animals give off, plants need and vice versa. So here's your first question. What is misleading about what I have just showed you? Plants certainly perform photosynthesis, and animals certainly perform cellular respiration, but my question to you is, do plants have mitochondria? And the answer is yes, they do. So the answer to question number one is, what's misleading is that this is plants at the top and this is animals at the bottom. No, this is plants at the top, only plants. But down here for cellular respiration, in the mitochondria, it happens in plants and animals. Moving on. 
Take a look at the overall equation of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration has a bunch of things that react together and it yields products. So the way that you say a chemical reaction is you put the reactants on the left-hand side, you draw an arrow, which signifies that a rearrangement is occurring and you have new things made. Imagine that all of these are made out of 100 Lego pieces and you dismantle all of the pieces and you reassemble it and you get this over here. Everything on the left-hand side of the arrow is called the reactants and they are going to make products. You say the word yield when you are speaking in words what you see written down in a formula. Glucose and oxygen yields carbon dioxide, water, and gives off ATP, and energy is also lost in the form of heat. Because this is oversimplified, this is not one chemical reaction, so that's why we have three arrows right here. That doesn't mean that there's three chemical reactions, there's probably hundreds of them. So we summarize cellular respiration in this formula right here. I highlighted six for O2, six for CO2, and six for water. What these numbers represent is your next question. The chemical equation has numbers in front of molecules. What does this mean? That means that there are numbers of these molecules. So there are six oxygens, there are six carbon dioxide molecules, and six water. If there is no number in front of a molecule, it's referred or understood to be one. This is also a balanced chemical equation, and you'll do a lot of balancing equations in chemistry class. Just understand what a balanced equation is. It refers to the same number of atoms on the left side of the arrow as on the right side. Let's count up all the oxygens. Because there are six molecules of oxygen, each molecule has two oxygens, so that's six times two. There's 12 oxygen atoms right there, and there's six oxygen atoms there. There's 18 oxygens on the left and 18 on the right. There are 12 hydrogens on the left, and six times two, 12 hydrogens on the right. And that means that nothing can be created from, I should say that atoms cannot be created out of nothing, only God can do that. And only God can destroy um, matter. Matter here on Earth is only rearranged. Even in an explosion, everything, every atom is accounted for in the products from the reactants. So the next question is, quite high level thinking, and it says glucose, but really it, it refers to any molecule. So where is the energy in a molecule? Well, there's carbon, there's hydrogen, there's oxygen. And the energy in the molecule is in what holds the molecule or the atoms together. So we've had a class before, and we know the three parts of an atom are the electron. There's an electron, I'll refer to that as E minus. There's a proton, that's proton positive, and there's a neutron. These are the three parts of the atom. And when we were drawing atoms, remember when we were having like the nucleus right here, and then we had electrons orbiting? If there's another atom over here with its electron, and these two are going to come together, and they're both short electrons, they're going to share electrons and they just overlap. They overlap their electrons, and now it will feel like the electrons are around each one. So I just described where the energy is in a molecule. It's in the covalent bond sharing of electrons.
So what we're going to do in this reaction right here is we're going to dismantle glucose. We're going to pull the electrons out of here and we are going to harness that energy of the electrons and use it to make ATP. Everything else is going to be thrown away. So what we're trying to get at are the electrons in glucose, the electrons. So this next picture here, I want you to understand what is the driving force with oxygen getting into your lungs and getting into your bloodstream, to getting into your cells, to getting into the mitochondria. There are two processes. It's either diffusion or active transport. Do you think it, if you open your mouth, do you think it takes energy to pump the oxygen into your lungs without you breathing? If you just don't do anything, does it take any energy for the oxygen to go from your bloodstream? No, excuse me, from the lungs into the bloodstream? Does it take any energy for the oxygen to go from your bloodstream and go into here? Wherever there's more, it's going to diffuse. No energy is required. So there's more oxygen in the air than in your lungs, so it diffuses in there. There's more oxygen in your lungs than in your bloodstream, so it diffuses there. No energy required. It just zips on right through. It's a small molecule. Similarly, there is a lot more carbon dioxide in your cells after cellular respiration, so it diffuses into your bloodstream. Then there's more carbon dioxide in your bloodstream than in your lungs, so it diffuses into the air sacs. With the help of your diaphragm, it gets pushed out. Everything happens by diffusion. Let's take a look at this picture right here to answer several questions. The question was for number five, is the oxygen that you're breathing in the same as the oxygen that you're exhaling? Follow the line. It's going right here and the oxygen is going into water. So number five, the answer for number five, are the oxygen atoms the same? No. O2 that you breathe goes into water. It goes into the H2O. Question number 10, no, excuse me, number nine, it's the same question I had a duplicate. What happens to the oxygen breathed in during cellular respiration? It goes into water. Let's do another one. Uh, it is number 10. Let's track the carbon in glucose. So the carbon in glucose right there. Where does that go? It's going to go, follow the arrow, it's going to go into what you exhale, carbon dioxide. CO2. And now let's take a look at um, questions six, seven, and eight. What is it called when a molecule loses electrons? Oxidation. Oops. What is it called when a molecule gains electrons? These are special chemistry terms. So look back over here. There's that word oxidized. When something like glucose loses electrons, it's called oxidized. When something gains an electron, it is said to be reduced. These two always have to happen together. 
Think about it. If something loses electrons, something else has to gain electrons. So these happen together. And we're going to take the RED in reduced. And we're going to take the OX in oxidized. And this is called the redox reactions. You'll cover a lot of this in chemistry class. How can we remember which one is gaining and which one is losing electrons? Right here, oil rig. That new not, new, uh, it's pronounced pneumonic. It is oil rig. So the O in oil, that was kind of messy there. The O in oil stands for oxidized is loss. Reduction is gain, and these refer to the electrons. And we'll do a couple more here. Earlier I said that what we're getting at here with glucose, this is glucose, what we want are the electrons. I'll put an E minus. All we want are the electrons out of glucose and we will throw away everything else. So it's going to strip electrons and the electrons are going to end up going right there. So that blue dot is one electron and right one electron. So I'll put a two E minus right there showing that two electrons are stripped out of glucose. And they go into what I am calling an electron carrier, like a car or a taxi carrying passengers. How about, you've heard of Uber, and you've heard of Lyft. Well, those are two gig companies. That means these are two options for people to drive uh, people around and earn money without being hired by a, a taxi cab company. So you're your own boss, independent contractor. So instead of Uber or Lyft, there's a new, new guy on the block and it is a passenger vehicle called NADH. So it's a new one. So the first part of breaking apart glucose in order to make energy starts by stripping the electrons out of it and taking the electrons for a ride. And you're going to do that with this molecule called NADH. So electrons from glucose will be like electricity. Whenever electrons are flowing, that's like electric wires being plugged into the wall and electrons flow down the wire. What molecule is gonna carry the electrons? It is NADH. We've already covered 11. Where in glucose are the electrons coming from? They're coming from the covalent bonds. They're coming from the shared electrons between two carbons, like right here. So we're getting at this dashed line, which represents two electrons. We're going to pull that apart and grab the electrons. So number 13, the electrons are dropped off at the electron transport chain, this picture right here. So here is my Uber. Going to take these electrons for a ride over to... Uh, this spot, I really should have driven uh, the car right there because there they are. When the electrons get out of the car, there are the electrons right there. The empty Uber car now is able to drive back and pick up more passengers. These electrons are dropped off like celebrities at the red carpet in Hollywood. Like a limousine, they're dropped off and they, they go down the membrane 
So right here, these purple guys, these are proteins embedded into the mitochondrial membrane. They are passed from one protein to another like a hot potato. And then the electrons are finally dropped off. Question 13. What two atoms will combine with these electrons to form water? There it is. Hydrogen and oxygen. So we know that hydrogen, two of them, and one oxygen is water. So what is the job of the oxygen that you breathe? Remember, uh, you used your lungs to breathe in oxygen, to get into your bloodstream, to diffuse into the cells, to diffuse into the cytoplasm, to diffuse into the mitochondria. The sole purpose of all of that travel was to accept the electrons. So oxygen is needed to like mop up the mess. If you didn't have something to accept electrons, they would pile up. Electrons that are free and uh, away from their atom are called free radicals and they can be very dangerous. They can actually destroy parts of the cell. So you have to have something that is going to soak them up. Otherwise it's very dangerous. And so oxygen is the superhero and uh, comes and grabs those like uh, people falling off a bridge, you know, like Superman and the superheroes are always grabbing people at the last minute. So these are the superheroes uh, right here. They would have a big O on the front of their um, shirt. So what was the purpose of having the electrons just bounce from protein to protein right here? Pretty obvious, right? It is going to be the energy needed to make ATP. Controlled release of energy for the synthesis of ATP. So what this was, these are electrons flowing down a membrane like electrons flowing down a wire and that's electricity. There's two types of energy. There is energy of motion, that's kinetic energy, and that's what we see right here. And the first one was potential energy. So in, in our next class, we're gonna go over details uh, about this. We just had the overall high level view, and now we're gonna get into the details of the three steps that I have given you an overview on. And so this is just the beginning. What energy molecule is also ultimately made when the electrons fall down the energy staircase? Uh, we saw it, ATP. And we'll finish the notes in the